New polymer pistols seem to come out more and more often these days. And many of them, however, are just Glock clones that don't really improve on anything or change anything for the better. Kimber, however, did something a little bit different and actually designed a new pistol in the R7 Mako line. Now, it started with the R7 Mako subcompact for those ultra compact carry days. Now, Kimber has released the R7 Mako Carbon Compact, and this one seems to have just about every option you could want in a striker fired pistol right out of the box. For starters, you're going to get 15 plus one capacity, so 15 in the mag, one in the pipe. It's going to be optics ready, which should just be a standard in the modern era. The frame is carbon fiber reinforced with polymer, so it's gonna be extremely durable, reliable, and it's gonna last a long time. It's gonna have great iron sights from True Glow right out of the box with a bold front sight, and they are usable with the optic installed, which again, should just be a standard in the modern market. It has full ambidextrous controls, so right-handed and left-handed users can both get a piece of the action. It's got aggressive grip texture on it that is not abrasive. It's going to help you out on the range, control that recoil impulse. You also get interchangeable back straps, so you can custom fit this to your hand size and to make sure your finger is gonna appropriately get on that trigger. The double undercut on that trigger guard is also gonna help you get a really good firm master grip on that pistol and also help you control recoil just a little bit more. Now out on the front of that frame, You've got recoil reduction ledges with that same aggressive texture. Again, this is going to help you reduce recoil quite a bit by giving you a thumb ledge so you can break on that thing as hard as you can and go ahead and keep that slide running smooth and flat. On the front, you'll also get an accessory rail, which again, should be a standard in the modern market for all of your lights, lasers, and mini bayonet needs. And probably one of the biggest things for me here is it has a factory magwell on it, which I personally am a huge fan of. One of the coolest design features of the Carbon Compact is the slide to barrel interface. Now this is an improved browning lockup design, also called the Boobits design, where instead of the barrel locking towards the front of the hood, there's actually a locking lug that interfaces with the top of the slide towards the rear. This does have some benefit that we're gonna talk about later, but it also has a nice clean look across the top of the slide with a side ejection port, and it's gonna make sure due to that design that you get a consistent ejection out that side every time. A few other features that a barrel lockup design like this gives is reduced barrel tilt during operation, which obviously is a positive. The less movement, the better things are. It also can allow for a lower bore and should provide less felt recoil overall, which I did notice in my testing. It's also a very reliable design, which is obviously paramount when it comes to a pistol you're gonna actually carry around. Another thing you need to think about when it comes to personal safety is the safety of your personal information. And that's why Aura is the sponsor of this video today. And Aura is also the provider of personal identity protection that I use after personally being the victim of fraud. Aura's multi-spectrum protection service helps you not only get rid of spammers, scammers, and fraudsters in the way of identity theft, fraud, forgery, but it also helps you cut down on junk mail, junk calls, and all of your personal information being out there and available online. If you haven't been paying attention, there has been a massive data breach when it comes to the Social Security Administration to the point where 2.5 billion Americans, or literally almost every American that's ever been issued a Social Security number, some of the services they will provide are going to be identity theft protection, cleaning up your personal data from the internet, and removing your data from data broker websites. If you just search your name or a family member's name on the internet, it is absolutely crazy how much information is out there on you for sale, both legally and illegally. Or it can help protect you with credit monitoring, a VPN, and like I said, just to help cut down on all the junk mail, spam, and telemarketers. And like I said, it's free to try for a couple of weeks at the link in the description, which is or.com forward slash tactical considerations. Now that you know some of the basics about the new carbon compact from Kimber, Let's talk about how this thing was out there on the range and getting used to it in that first about 500-ish rounds. I think we all know that 500 rounds isn't exactly a huge benchmark when it comes to modern polymer striker fire pistols. They should be able to go for tens of thousands of rounds before you have any serious issues or large maintenance that would be necessary. However, that's just the number that I usually get around for my first impressions on a pistol. Now, one of the first things I noticed about the new carbon compact here from Kimber is that the optic sits very low on that slide. So that's important to me because I wanna be able to have backup iron sights and I don't want them to be excessively tall. So a deep cut into that slide 
is definitely a plus. Those backup high-vis sights are great and they are usable with the optic mounted, which should just be a standard. The controls on here, everything from the trigger, the slide stop slide release, the magazine release, all of which is ambidextrous, was just right in the place where I wanted them. Even for my larger hands, it was easy to run this small compact pistol. This thing pointed very naturally for me. It's much more akin to a 1911 grip angle than many of the more aggressive striker fired pistol angles out there in the market today. The trigger here, absolutely solid. With that flat trigger shoe, the minimal take up, that very solid break and reset, it's just a trigger on a striker fired rig that you can be consistently happy with. The feel of this thing in the hand is absolutely solid. Between the grip texture, the undercuts on the frame, the recoil reduction ledges out on the front, and the magwell, it just fits in the hand very solid, comfortable, and feels really good under recoil. Now, when it comes to recoil control and felt recoil, the frame was built just right. So there are a lot of options on this pistol, from the aggressive texture, the magwell, the finger groove, the double undercut, the recoil ledges, that most of us have to turn to the aftermarket forward that come factory on this pistol, which is always a big positive because those things are gonna make a difference out on the range, especially when you've got that aggressive grip texture everywhere, you've got the double undercuts to get a really high grip, and then those recoil reduction ledges right there on the side. So as you're pressing out, you can just mash down on this thing with your support hand, freeing up your primary hand to work that trigger, which again was very solid. Combine that with a pretty low bore axis and that boobus design, there was a difference in the felt recoil. I will roll in some slow motion footage here. It seemed to me and it felt like it to me that the muzzle rise on this was a little bit less than other pistols in the same size and weight category. Now, obviously if you get a big, huge, heavy pistol, you're probably gonna have less felt recoil, but for a polymer striker fired rig in the size category of like a compact, I think this one did have a decent reduction in the muzzle rise right out of the box. Now, I know some people might ask, well, why is muzzle rise a big deal or should it even matter? And it really does because the less this muzzle rises or flips up after each shot, the faster you're going to be able to get right back on target exactly where you want to aim and get a faster follow-up shot. Now, whether you're in competition, training, or whatever you're doing out there, those follow-up shots can be the determination between winning and losing, whatever the circumstance is. So the less muzzle rise or muzzle flip you have, the faster you can get that second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth shot off or whatever you need to address the issue, the better off you're going to be. And me personally, I will take any advantage I can get when it comes to a pistol. Now, I know some of you are going to want to see the finer details of this pistol up close, kind of how it fits in the hand. And of course, put the trigger on a gauge. So let's get up close to this thing and check all that stuff out. Let's quickly talk about what you are actually going to get with your new R7 Mako Kimber Compact right here. So this is the optic included version. There are non-optic versions. There are just the standard non threaded barrel version. Completely up to you. But basically, you're going to get your pistol. You're going to get two of the 15 round magazines. You're also going to get this nylon case right here. So you've got a couple of different pockets for your range gear or whatever in here. You're going to get obviously your manual. If you get an optics ready version, you will get all the stuff for the optic in there. You'll get your lock, you'll get a sticker, all the basic stuff that comes with a normal pistol case. You got some bungee retainers in here. Those are so you can put additional mags in there just like that and separate your magazines from the main pistol case, which has a couple of different sections in here. So you can put up to three pistols in here, keep them safe, keep them scratch free. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. And one of the things I want to quickly talk about here when it comes to the magazines for this pistol here. So they are the 15 rounders, right? But you can see this little slide over thing right here. If you have the original R7 Mako, the subcompact version, and it's got those little sleeves on it, these mags will work, right? So just take the sleeve off and you now have an additional 15 round mag for your new carbon compact. So if you got those original ones, you are going to be good to go there. Let's talk just quickly about a couple of the finer details here. So you can see that nice magwell on there, massive fan. This grip texture is absolutely solid and it is all the way around, except for right up under here on that finger groove, which is a good idea because that's where people tend to get what they call Glock knuckle or polymer frame striker gun knuckle 
where it rubs into the trigger guard right there, especially if it's not undercut like this, and that can cause a problem. So good texture everywhere you need it, front strap, back strap, all the way up along both sides, up under the trigger guard, little bit of additional recoil help right there. Like I said, double undercut on that trigger guard, very nicely done so your finger fits in there. All that is grooved out for you, solid stuff. Good wide beaver tail right there, okay? That's a big help getting up there for recoil management. You've got a little bit of texture out on the front of the trigger guard. If it's your thing to grab out there, it's your thing. That double undercut, recoil reduction ledges right there, and they are deep. So you can get your finger all up in there and just really clamp down on this with your support hand. That way you get less muzzle rise when you're firing out there on the range. You do have full ambidextrous controls, both magazine release, slide stop, slide release. That's your takedown lever. Very cool setup when it comes to the frame. They have really done everything you usually want done to a frame. Multi-slot pick rail out front. That's a huge help for different size lights. Front serrations, rear serrations, awesome sights. Take a good look at those. You've got that nice, bold, serrated rear, that nice, bold front. So white and orange combo right there really is a good mix. Those are actually some really solid sights. They are metal. And as you can see, they're actually still usable with the optic. That is a huge plus, right? And then if you get the threaded barrel version, you get the threaded barrel. Last thing you probably wanna take a look at is that closed hood design right there. So the ejection port's on the side. Pretty cool. Make sure you're gonna have consistent ejection out the side. No chances of your brass coming up there and scratching your optic plate. But let's do some trigger pulls and some trigger gauges. So right there is your wall. It's firm, it's consistent. A very solid break with very little creep. Let's see the reset. It's tactile, it's responsive. You're at the wall and it just breaks. Very solid on the trigger, especially for a factory flat face trigger here. Let's go ahead, break out the Lyman digital gauge here. And we are gonna do three pulls unless I get something really weird. Um, these gauges can be a little finicky. If you pull too fast, it'll give you a super light reading. So we're gonna to try to keep the little roller wheel on the trigger about right there. So 3.77, not bad. I think it's a little heavier than that. I'll try to pull from more midline on the trigger shoe this time. Right about there. That roller wheel is kind of a pain. So that one, three pounds, 14 ounces. Again, not bad. Okay. All right, let's do one more. Let's try and get dead center of the trigger shoe. You can see that thing rolling around on me, but it'll just keep going up. So dead center on the trigger shoe, uh, 527. Let's do one more, because um, if you don't know, the higher you go on the trigger shoe, the heavier it'll be, the lower you go, the lower it will be. So let's do one more, and I'll try to get this thing set. There we go. I wanted to help that wheel, but I didn't. So 4.88, I think if I just hit the average button, average of 4.43, so four pounds, four, three ounces. Overall, not bad on that pistol at all. As far as the fit in the hand goes, you can see that right there for a good double XL size gloved hand. You can see it fits quite nicely. The slide is about as thick as my finger, so it's just over an inch thick but the way the magwell squeezes your hand, if you got those bigger hands, it's gonna help you keep a high grip on there all the way up through there. And overall, just a very solid feeling grip all the way around. And since I know some of you out there need a data sheet like you need your daily fix, here is a spec sheet with a little bit of music to enjoy it too. All right, now for the part that some people just seem to enjoy where I start nitpicking, talking about pros and cons here when it comes to the new Carbon Compact from Kimber. Let's talk about some of the pros here. So one, the overall feel of this pistol out there on the range, absolutely solid. So it's got that less aggressive grip angle. I settled right in. Interchangeable back strap so you can fit it to you. Overall feels great. Second thing, the framework. Everything they did to this frame, the magwell, the texture, the undercuts, the finger groove, it's just there. The recoil reduction ledges, that deep tang here to get your hand really high up in there. They just did a solid job right out of the box because most of the stuff done in this frame 
to include the magwell, all the stipple work, the undercuts. Usually we have to turn to the aftermarket for those kind of things and it costs a lot of money. Grip jobs usually gonna be a couple hundred bucks. Magwell's gonna be another hundred bucks. You want some recoil reductions out on the front, that's usually another 50 bucks to go with the uh, stipple work and get it done. So you can see how these things will add up. So getting that stuff from the factory is definitely a solid. The last thing I'm gonna say for a big pro here, the sights. Solid, metal, bold, true glow sights that are actually usable with the optic. I don't know why gun companies in 2024 are putting sights on a gun that are useless when you put the optic on it. Defeats the whole purpose of having a set of backup iron sights. Now, let's nitpick a little bit here. Even though I like a lot of things that are going on here, there's one thing that stood out to me that I would say, if I had to tear this thing down and just change one thing or give my input on what I think could be a little bit better, and I think some of you are gonna agree with me, some of you maybe not, let me know in the comments. The Magwell, I love it. I love the fact that it came with the Magwell, but here's the thing. The little tactical cutouts on the side for stripping a mag, just get rid of them, make the Magwell the same all the way around because you're gonna do better off stripping just getting your thumb in here or your finger in here from the front or the back, don't take that the wrong way. Then trying to use these little side cutouts. Now, I don't know about you, I prefer a very consistent magwell on all my pistols because a hard edge right here just isn't the best when you can have that round interface all the way around. Now, I know that's nitpicking and I know there is a purpose for those cutouts to be there. Some people are gonna love it, some people are not gonna love it. Me personally, even with big hot dog fingers, I can strip this mag from the front or from the back like this better than I can the side trying to get a fingernail on it. So if I were to give one piece for design improvement, that would be it. Well, let's talk my final thoughts and the price on the Carbon Compact from Kimber in the R7 Mako line. I know that's a lot of name right there. So I am impressed. All of the options that we want in a modern striker pistol on it from the factory. Feels good out on the range. It's been consistently reliable, about that 500-ish round mark. I will do more. I know that's not the ultimate of a benchmark, but that's a good starting point here. I'm also impressed for the price that these things come in at in the modern market of late 2024 with all the inflation we've seen, the shortages we've seen the past couple of years. So the standard version is like 735 galactic federal credits. And then if you want to get the kind of, you know, tactical threaded barrel with the optic, it goes up to about 1,095. Now, I know that may be expensive to some, not expensive to others, but let's think about that here. So for this version with an optic, everything you see, Magwell, framework, everything included, 1095. So you don't wanna go with your own optic or you wanna go with something else that uh, you like better or whatever, 735 for the standard version. Again, you just don't get the thread of barrel on the optic, but it has every other option here as well. Let's compare that to some of the other compacts in the market that are usually gonna run you 650, 700 bucks at the store. Then you got to do some grip work. You got to do a double undercut. You got to do some ledges up front. Uh, right there, you're probably well over that mark because most really good stipple jobs that I know of with the double undercuts, the grip work, and then the ledges out front are probably going to run you right around 250, 300 bucks. So you're already at about 950, maybe a thousand dollars just to get the grip done. And you still got to get an optic and all that good stuff. So it's up to you, but ultimately for that price point, and what you're getting, I don't think a lot of us out there can realistically gripe with those price points, again, in the modern market. I'm not talking about five years ago, I'm talking about right now, late 2024. Now, is it for you or would you like it? Well, I can't tell you that. It's your wife's job or your girlfriend's job to tell you what you can spend your money on if that's your thing. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, it's just my job to give you guys the best information I can, a little bit of my opinion and the factual data that I've been able to accumulate while testing these things out so you can make the best decision for you on how to spend your money and what you might like in the market. So if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not for you, it's not for you. It's worth a try in the hand or maybe even a rental out on the range. And that's where I like to leave things because I want you to make the most informed choice for yourself. Now keep doing it on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you all on the next one.